Yes, and Jelani Asar here with Income Protection Atlanta. First things first, go to IncomeProtectionAtlanta.com. Right now, just open up a new tab or a new browser in Firefox or whatever your browser may be. Go to IncomeProtectionAtlanta.com and join our email list so you can receive your free report entitled Protect My Income in Atlanta only for you if you desire more financial security in this volatile and chaotic economy and now let's get to our interview with another mesmerizing Atlanta business owner <laughs> and going into a little bit more is how you came to be the guru that you are right now. I'm very curious about this. What does it take to, you were talking about being a political candidate when you were very young. Uh, you have history as a venture capitalist. I mean, what does it take to, for example, be a VC? And, you know, I mean, there's so many people who, from my understanding, in order to be a VC, you have to have a vast knowledge and you also have, a, have to have a vast bank account. And both of these things seem to be very rare. Even in the United States, you were touching on the fact that in the United States, the opportunity to build a business and really make a way for yourself is greater than really in anywhere else in the world. I mean, how is it that you've done this? I know that you, uh, ever since the age of eight, you were working in your family business. Uh, what else contributed to your success, Charles? Well, at age eight, of course, that was called involuntary servitude. <laughs> And uh, as I describe in my, uh, my profile online, I, I was uh, sitting at a board meeting every night around the dinner table listening to all the good and, and bad things about being in business. Uh, my parents ran a business, and they were their own board of directors, and everything got resolved every night. Mm. But um, venture capital is has evolved and changed considerably in the last 20 years. Uh, when I was uh, involved in that part of the finance business, and I, and I was not a, a principal that came to the table with any big dollars. I was an employee of a fund that made investments in a lot of high-tech businesses. Uh, there were several investors who just pooled their money. Uh, they were all experienced uh, technology people who had made a bunch of money at that time doing some radical things. Um, if, if there's anyone listening in your audience who knows some history of the whole computer business, there's a company called a University, um, I'm, I'm sorry, um, Computer Associates. Computer, computer Associates was started in Switzerland by a couple of programmers who worked for Universal Computing Corporation, UCC. Uh, that was an American company that had some branches in Europe and around the world, and they did mainframe software. And there were some clients come to UCC wanting custom-built software for a specific application, and UCC had no interest in doing that. They were doing just fine writing big general programs and charging to install and to support them. That was the model then. Uh, but these three guys who work for UCC stepped forward and said, you know what, we will do this, and here's what we'll charge. And they started Computer Associates SA. And Computer Associates SA took off like crazy because people wanted solutions specific to their business that wasn't just an off-the-shelf, everybody's got it. Right. And that business built up through the 70s and started on a, a U.S. Uh, you know, they got partners in in U.S. to um, build the business here, and they did a public offering in about 1980 in the U.S. in New York. And uh, the, the gentleman that I worked for uh, took his share of those proceeds. He was one of the three founders, and he bowed out of the company. 
Huh. But he, he settled with about $40 million back in the day. Uh. So, you know, investing those kind of monies and, and having a, a, a real inf- understanding of the marketplace helps you uh, raise other money because people know you know what you're doing. They see you've been successful at what you know. Right. And your money's in the, in the deal, so they feel more comfortable that you've got your best interest at heart and you'll take their best interest at heart. So from my understanding, it seems like it started for you with being in the business, being surrounded by people who know what they're doing, and then you learning, uh, you learning from them. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. And and getting a lot of you know management opportunities and being involved in a lot of transactions. Uh, when I was thirty years old, that some folks I've known haven't been involved in by the time they're fifty years old. Huh. But but you know you just you, you take all those lessons and you just uh, roll them up and you keep keep building on them. Yeah. Um, my my focus really stayed at the small business level. Uh, I'm probably more of an expert about daycare centers and uh, restaurants than I am uh, how to build a new iPhone application. But the the venture market changed dramatically. Now it, it's it's rarely one person's money. You aggregate up uh, a lot of well heeled people who might throw in a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars to get into a pool, and that big pool has got two years to invest, or the money comes back to the investor. Um, the VCs will be more of a committee than they will be one individual. Okay, and they. Uh, may aggregate their investment with a dozen other venture funds so that nobody's got all their money on one number, but they mm-hmm. all throw in a million or two or three million dollars into the same deal. Huh. And then they work together as far as... Right, right. So, And, and that also guards everybody's risk. Right. So, so I think in 1985, there were about 2,000 venture funds in the country, and today there's less than 900. Oh really? And according to the Angel Capital Association, there uh, there were something like sixty-seven thousand venture investments last year that totaled twenty million dollars, while there were something like two hundred fifty thousand angel investor deals that totaled twenty-two billion dollars. Huh. Wow. So you know, it's it's an evolving world. <laughs> and wonderful and join us for our next part of another fantastic interview with our great guest with another amazing Atlanta business owner in the next video